Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Sylvia S15 Spec R. This one went a bit under Derek's guess, selling for $7,500. The Suzuki Lappin Chocolate went for way over Derek's guess. It sold for $8,010. That's an expensive piece of chocolate. The Nissan Machine with the Hummer lookalike front end did not sell, even though it was bid up to almost five times Derek's guess at $2,500. The R34 GT25T did not sell. The bidding didn't even get up to Derek's guess and topped out at $89.30. The Sunny Truck also did not sell. This one went a little over Derek's guess and the bidding stopped at $21.40. We're not sure how high the Lancer Evo 6 could have gone because the auction was canceled. The Dodge Ram V10 was another unsold car. This one got bid all the way up to $10,220 but that wasn't enough for the seller to let it go. The Town Ace Wagon did sell. It went for $36.70. The military wannabe Jimny with the two-stroke engine was also cancelled. That's too bad, I wanted to know what that one would have gone for. And finally, the Benz S500 Coupe, or Coupe as Derek would say, sold for a bit over his guess, going for $58.40. That's going to do it for last week's picks, now here's Derek with this week's. Hey guys, it's Derek here and we have our contest. This one here is special because we do these videos every week, but this one we decided to do something very special because the auctions are going to be closed next week. Our office is going to be closed. There's going to be no video. And so this is something special for you guys to give you congratulations for being awesome, for helping us pick cars from the last uh, few months and stuff. And so what is the contest? It is a chance for you to win Japanese snacks. And I wish I had pictures and stuff to show you the Japanese snacks, but there is a post on Facebook that shows you what kind of snacks that you can win for this. And then uh, how do you enter? How do you win? Well, unfortunately, if you're watching this, the chance to enter has already passed. We posted this up out on our Facebook, uh, I think, two days ago stating that we would have some sort of a contest here. And so if you want to check for these types of contests, make sure that you go to Facebook and you give us a like and post comments every once in a while because some people don't get all of the posts in Facebook. That's the way that Facebook works. And so post comments every once in a while. Facebook will say, hey, this guy likes, um, this, guy likes this type of content and will show you everything from us. And so the way it works is you guys got to pick your own cars. I got 10 cars up here and then you pick how much you think these cars are going to sell for at auction. And if you are the closest person out of everybody who picked one, then you get to win the special prize of awesome Japanese JDM candies and snacks, cookies, that sort of stuff. Stuff that you can't get outside of Japan. So for a lot of people, this is going to be very cool. And so you kind of have a 1 in 10 chance this time. We did have 16 people uh, enter, but 6 of the... 16 didn't enter correctly. Here's a reminder the cars need to be at auction the day after this video, um, the day after this ends. And so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, today being Wednesday. And if that's not the case, then we can't actually do those videos. And so, yeah, just keep in mind we do post that each time when we put up the, the video, but uh, you know, there's a block of text, not everybody reads it all. And so, sorry to those people who didn't, um, didn't catch that. Okay, so one entry per person. You need to guess the price. Here's the thing though, you don't get the full translation, so you can't really see the condition. Pay attention to the body condition on the diagram there, the mileage, the year, and then you can look at stats of the past auctions. And whoever's the closest is gonna win those snacks. Now, we might make this a regular thing depending on how popular this one is, and so make sure that you check back and like us on Facebook to see future things like this. And uh, let's go right to the beginning. So first off, Bill Courtney, and this isn't in any particular order. This is just the order that it came up. So Bill sent in this one here. This is a Mitsubishi Fuso Fighter Turbo 6.6 T. And so this is a 2002 intercooled turbo eight liter. It's a 6.6 T and that's the, uh, I guess the weight 6,600 kilograms it can carry, but it has an 8-liter diesel turbo engine and 6-speed manual. Surprised there's not more because it is kind of the largest truck that you see in Japan on the roads. It has the very cool uh, deco truck pieces like aftermarket front bumper, aftermarket piece above the windshield here. And uh, looks like the, the taillights are LEDs, but they don't look that flashy. 
Now this one has uh, 802,477 kilometers and so well used. And condition here, ABS lamp is on, interior is yellow, probably from cigarettes. Eh. Um, corrosion holes, hmm. Uh, aftermarket shift knob, winter tires. Let's see that aftermarket shift knob. <laughs> Very cool. Um, one of the wheels is has a bend in it. What else is there? The central locking doesn't work. Underside and frame surface rust and corrosion. So really high mileage and uh, not that great of condition. So Bill Courtney, your guess for this one was 300,000 yen. And I'm not going to say my guess in this video because I don't want to... Uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a new format. Let me know in the comments what you think about this format as well. Uh, if you can think of improvements, maybe we can do this once a month or something like that, or once every couple of months. Anyways, on to the next one. Andrew Coy sent in a Skyline. This one here is <clears throat> 1998 Skyline GTX Turbo. So what's a GTX Turbo? That's weird, I don't even know. Sounds like a four-wheel drive, but I don't think that they made the four-wheel drive with the turbo in the 34, unless it's a GTR. Anyway, auction grade four, interior B, exterior A minus, 58, 170 kilometers, automatic transmission. Now that's odd because the autos are gonna sell for a lot less than the manuals. Aftermarket wheels, aftermarket exhaust, rear spoiler on here, aero parts, seat saggy, aftermarket air filter, Steering wheel wear, undercharge scratched and dented, wheel scratched, perfect body almost with one crack in the side skirt on the left side right over here. So uh, the price that Andrew picked on this one was 600,000 yen. Now keep in mind it is an auto. The manuals usually for a condition like this is going to be in the 1.4 million, 1.2, 1.4 million. This one here, 600,000 from Aaron. Next one, Raymond Yu. Raymond sent in a really rare car. This is an Evo 3 with a sunroof on it. Evo 3s alone are really hard to find. 1, 2, and 3 are all really hard to find, but the 3s particularly because they didn't make too many of the 3s, and they were the first really good one. Not that the first and second ones weren't good, but the third one was really good. And the third one was the, the first one with the super big spoiler on the back and the most aggressive uh, front end, probably out of any of them, to be honest. 1995 GSR Evolution 3, 52, 750 kilometers. That's ultra low for one of these. Usually they're well over 100, sometimes over 200. Auction grade RA with an interior B, aftermarket exhaust, NK wheels on it, aftermarket suspension, shift knob, Momo steering wheel, sunroof for Caro seats, and authentic mileage in the 50,000s. The body looks really good with a giant dent in the back quarter here. You can kind of see it in the picture, but not that much. And then the front bumper A3 and cracks. That's just this front lip here by the looks of it. And then aftermarket front lights. This is the original hood on the Evo 3 and original side skirt. The side skirt says Evolution 3 on it in kind of not embosed. What's the opposite of embosed? I don't know. It's sunken in. Letters are sunken in. Maybe that is what it means. Don't know. Okay, uh, underside corrosion. Pretty common thing for the Evos to be honest. Uh, Exterior has some paint fade on it. Right front inner panel dented. That's uh, auction rated RA, and so that's why it has accident damage there. Extra gauges inside the car. Do we get an interior picture? Just one, it looks like. And then this is a monitor that's covered with some sort of a sun cover. Okay, condition looks pretty good. I think I have an idea of what I think it would sell for. Raymond thinks this one's going to sell for 500,000 yen. So we'll see if Raymond wins the grand prize. Next one, Perry Chapel. Perry. Here's something that I'm thinking about for the next one. We might want to exclude any vehicle within three years of being new. I know this one isn't. But there are brand new cars at auction. And we don't want people to pick a brand new car and then just pick the MSRP and then say, Ha ha, I win! because auction cars will sell for around the same as the MSRP for some of them, some of the brand new cars. But this one here is a little bit old, 2013, That's is that the first year of these? Might be, I can't remember the first year of these cars. 53, 492 kilometers, seems a little bit high for Japanese standards for a car this new, 
but uh, should still be in really good condition. Auction rear four with an interior B. It's a one owner. What else? Adjustable suspension, SSR 18 inch wheels. What else on here? Fujitsu bow exhaust, rear spoiler, first time at auction, radar detector. So this guy likes to drive fast and not get tickets. Seat wear wheels scratched, door mirrors scratched, windshield rock chip, interior dirty and scratched, hood damper uh, doesn't function properly, suspension has been modified, tail light has water in it, you can kind of see there. And a tower bar has been put on. Okay, and uh, misaligned front bumper, weird, and uneven paint in the back here. You can't see the misaligned front bumper here in the pictures, even though it is a nice large picture. Um, but it's going to be a little bit off in one area. Okay, and so the guess here for Perry was 1.5 million. I think that that's a pretty good guess on there. So Sean William Bellamy, let's see what you got here. Ooh, a high ace. With a tall roof and the longest version. Hence the, or uh, that's, you get this extra window here for the longest version. Okay, high ace wagon. Very much like these, and especially so if it has a five speed manual transmission like this one does. So high ace grand cabin, four wheel drive, 3000 cc diesel turbo engine with the five speed. That's actually something really rare. 69060 kilometers, 3.5 is the grade, and C is the interior. Diesel turbo. Um, full-time four-wheel drive and 10-seater and so this is like a mini bus you can't really see all the seats in there but I bet there are 10 of them so yeah uh, hmm <laughs> I was just looking at Sean's price on here can't say anything I'm not going to give my uh, opinion on what these sell for front windshield rock chip interior dirty and scratched and uh, door mirror scratch battery needs to be replaced, underside surface rust, corrosion, painted, and then various rust and corrosion in areas underneath. Exterior has paint, or, um, hmm, I don't know what this means. Maybe repaired rust and corrosion? Exterior paint fade in one part is peeling. AC doesn't work on the car. Body looks to be in exceptional condition with a medium dent on the back here, and then medium dents on the roof, which is tall enough for nobody to see it, except for Andre the Giant, but he, it's, it's sad. He, yeah. Uh, anyways, Sean's pick here, 425,000 yen for the high ease. And so good luck, Sean, to you. Jake Mello picked it, this one here. <laughs> Probably the best name of a car ever. And if you type it into Google, you can find some excellent pictures too. So this is called a Mitsubishi Pajero Jr. Flying Pug. Amazing name. I'm getting mental images right now of a flying pug. And if you want those to be real images, you can type it in Google. You can find pictures of flying pugs, uh, whether intentionally or not. Okay, 1998 Pajero Jr. flying pug. So what this is, is they take up Pajero Jr. and then they put on these uh, super arches and they put on a different front end and it kind of looks like, like a UK cab, but kind of not. Kind of like a classic car, but kind of not. Very strange nonetheless. And for those people who like strange cars, this is kind of the amazingness. It even says on the back, Pajero Jr. Flying Pug, and it has a pug here. Very cool. So it's a 1.1 liter gasoline engine, automatic transmission, four-wheel drive, auction grade R, interior C. Gauge, uh, mileage is unknown, 57,935, but star here means unknown. Gauges have been changed. 20th anniversary, I guess of the Pajero 20th anniversary? Hmm. Okay, looking at the body here, we have bad paint on the front fenders, W3. Paint cracked on the hood and paint peeling, W3 on the back right fender. Aftermarket audio, wheels, um, steering wheel wear, headliner dirty. Around the battery has rust, bed has scratches in it. Uh, audio scratched and dented. Core support, right front cross member, right front side member, all wrinkles and accident damage repaired car. Hmm. Jake Mello thinks the Mitsubishi Pajero Jr. Flying Pug is going to be 150,000 yen. 
and so we'll see on that one. And I wonder if these are the original wheels. They kind of look like it. I can see Mitsubishi center caps there. Very interesting looking wheel on that too. Okay, on to the next one. Oh, it's a name I can't pronounce. Oh man, okay. Elad Enrique Agosto. Okay, that didn't sound so bad. Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. If I were participating in this, this is the car that I would pick because we sell so many of these and prices are pretty consistent that you can get a pretty accurate guess for the Skyline GTRs uh, based on the condition. Okay, it's a 1992, and so that's a late model. Auction grade RA, 85, 558 kilometers, interior B. This is quite interesting for us to put on here because when you guys pass, uh, like pick the cars that we always, you know, we ask on Facebook, pick the cars for us and then we'll talk about them. I never choose these R32s because all day at work, I'm dealing with R32s and they get kind of, I'm not going to say boring, they're fantastic cars, just for someone who sees them all day, I don't really want to talk about them that much more in a video that's supposed to be enjoyable for me to present. And so it's nice to see one on here so everyone can see how much that they sell for because next uh, video we're going to uh, announce the results and show all the prices of all the cars. And so anyways, condition here, let's have a look. The body looks pretty good with some peeling paint in the back corner and some uh, repainted sections here with some paint wave, steering wheel wear and scratched seat wear wheels, scratched door mirror, scratched windshield rock chip, interior dirty and scratched, right front inner panel dented, left front inner panel dented, right rear fender replaced, core support replaced and dented or deformed. It's, it's kind of a weird word, the translation for that. Interior screw holes, suspension has been modified, steering wheel wear, seats color fade underside surface rust and corrosion and Elad's uh, price guess on this one is 1.5 million yen next one Zachary Konopa ah this one should be pretty easy to guess the price too um, these legacies sell for very consistent prices good to see this one has the double sunroof I think that that's awesome okay so this is a year 2000 GTB e-tune with the automatic transmission. So that's the twin turbo version with a boxer engine, four wheel drive. Really can't get a better car for the value, uh, better value car for your money than this one, I think, whether it be automatic or manual transmission. 74054 kilometers, auction grade 3.5, interior B, exterior C, uh, comes with a toll collection box. Windshield rock chip, interior dirty and wear, roof rails, paint fade, various scratches, dents, repairs, and paint comes up. On the front bumper, paint comes up. I don't really know what they mean on the front bumper. It could have been repainted and then that paint kind of cracked and, and bubbled because that front bumper is made out of like a urethane type of material. W3 on one side, that should be really poor condition paint. And then the side skirt here has an A2 scratch and some poor condition paint over here with big scratches on the back. So, kind of, I guess I would call this like a 5 out of 10 condition for the body. Interior should be really good. I think it's, uh, with a little bit of um, paint here and there, could be a good car. Mileage is low, automatic. I owned an automatic one of these. It's really fun to drive. 260 horsepower in the automatic version. Zachary guests guesses 40,000 yen for this one. Okay, I got two more here. Next one, Justin Thomas. Okay, Justin picked a, whoa, got the wrong one there. Justin picked a K truck. This is Suzuki Carry. The Suzuki Carry is the original one, or maybe not the original one, but it's the, the best seller. It's the most of them out there are made out of uh, Suzuki Carries. And uh, it seems like for the US, the Honda Acti is more popular for importing, even though these ones are more popular in Japan. And so that's a little bit weird. Okay, so this one is a four wheel drive with manual transmission. Most of the four wheel drive manual transmission ones don't have AC. It's usually the rear wheel drive ones that have AC. 660cc engine in there and auction grade 3.5, interior C. 16,859 kilometers, but keep in mind this is a five digit odometer car, and so it could be 116 or it could be 16, don't know. Steering wheel cracked and scraped, underside surface rust and corrosion, bed and sides have surface rust, 
scratches and dents, various scratches, dents, and surface rust. Body looks to be really good with a medium dent on the left side door and paint peeling on the roof. And then uh, Justin's price for this one is 80,000 yen. And on to the very last one, we have somebody, here. <laughs> here's a first. We have somebody with a full Japanese name. Not only that, it's a girl's name. And if you look at the statistics from our YouTube channel, 95% are male viewers and only 5% are female. So thank you so much, Miss Nakagawa Miyuki. That's last name first, first name last, the way that Japanese people would say it. So the first name here is Miyuki, last name is Nakagawa, and picked one of my favorite cars that we haven't bought yet. So people out there, please buy this car from us so that I can see one and drive one, because I absolutely want to. The package looks so amazing. Front wheel drive, lightweight body, 180 horsepower in this, I think, somewhere around there. But still, Civic Type R EK9, one of the best performing, best handling front wheel drive cars ever made. 1999 Civic Type R. Auction rated RA, interior B, 85, 880 kilometers. Purchase from user, aftermarket HDD Navi, Recaro seats, toll collection box. And then the condition here, um, steering wheel wear, seat wear, wheels scratched, windshield rock chip, interior dirty and a rip, right front inner panel and core support uh, dented, headliner has a stain on it, steering wheel peeling, underside surface rust, various scratches, various dents. The body looks to be fair with lots of big scratches on the front bumper. It's probably on the underside because lowered cars often get scuffed on the underside. Still comes with plates on it, and so that means it has current registration. That usually means a slightly higher price, but not always. <coughs> <coughs> I got a frog in my throat today. I feel like I'm starting to get sick. Okay, so price estimate on this one. Civic Type R's are really hard to get for a reasonable price because everybody loves them so much. Uh, Miyuki's guess for the price on this one is 800,000 yen. Okay, so that's going to be it for this. Now, because everything is closed for a week, we're not going to be back until the end of that week, and so it's going to be two weeks before you see the results uh, of what's going through. The vehicle has to sell in order to be eligible, and so even if you are close to the highest bid price and it doesn't sell, then you can't win. So whoever of these 10 people is closest is going to get our little care package of goodies sent to you. And I'm kind of crossing my fingers it's going to be Miyuki because if I'm right and this person lives in Japan, that's going to cost us less to send the stuff. Uh, okay, so thanks a lot for watching. Check us out on Facebook if you ever want to see, uh, you want a chance to participate in this every week. Uh, we're going to be doing contests maybe, depending on the feedback of this one, maybe once a month, once every two months or something like that. So let us know what you think about it. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching and talk to you later.